Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet a vintage camera purse. So, there have been lots of different variations on this idea floating around Pinterest for quite a while, but um, I have seen quite a few of these, and there aren't really very many um, free crochet patterns available for this style of purse. So I'm going to kind of do my own version of the vintage camera purse and I've got almost all of my supplies out in front of me but the first thing that you're going to need is the free written pattern which you will find on my blog. Just click the link down below in the description box. Or you can purchase a large print ad free printable PDF version with a full photo tutorial in my Ravelry store. So obviously the first thing you're going to need is the yarn. I have several different um, types of yarn here. All the yarns that I'm using are worsted weight. And um, these two are Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. And these two are the yarn inspirations, uh, either peaches and cream or sugar and cream. These are just 100% cotton worsted weight yarns. Um, these are the kinds you normally use for dish gloss, by the way. So, if you're not sure uh, what I'm talking about when I mention the brand, this is uh, what I'm using. It's the kind that you would normally use for dish cloth. And then these are the mercerized cottons, the 24-7 cotton from Lion Brand. So, I have a dark brown, I have a mint green, and then I have a white and a black. So if you have a different combination of brands of yarn, that's okay, but you want to make sure that they're all worsted weight. And obviously you can change the color combination if you want to, but um, I'm going to be using the green as my main color, the brown is the strap, and then the white and the black are used for the lens and um, the little accents and details that go on the bag. So now that we've got the yarn, we're going to need some other things along with that. I have a size G crochet hook, and this is my Furls Odyssey Purple. Uh, by the way, you definitely don't want to use a flimsy crochet hook for this. Um, definitely stay away from plastic hooks or from a, flimsy, uh, a flimsier wooden hook, mainly because we're going to be working into a kind of tight um, fabric here. We want um, we want our fabric to be worked at a slightly denser gauge than normal because we want to um, create a fabric that's sturdy and doesn't have big holes in it so that we can avoid lining the bag. You can line it if you want to, but I know that that is one thing a lot of people who would like to crochet a bag try to avoid, um, even though it's not that difficult to do, just because not everybody wants to have to go to the trouble to line the bag. So this bag does not have to be lined if you don't want it to, but the way we achieve that is by working a smaller, tighter fabric. And if you're using a flimsier type of hook, then the chance of you breaking your hook are going to be slightly higher because we're going to be um, using just a little bit more force than normal to go in and out of the stitches. It's not like a, you know, shove your hook into a really tight space type of, of gauge, but we just, um, we're working into a fabric that is a little bit tighter than we would normally use with this size of a hook. So that is why you want to make sure that your hook material is a strong one. This one is metal. You're also going to need some scissors and a yarn needle. And I have here a seven inch zipper, okay? So this is going to close the bag across the top and we're going to be attaching the zipper with a hand sewing needle and thread. So I don't have it sitting out right now, but I'm going to be using a, a white thread and a hand sewing needle to attach my zipper. And a measuring tape would be a good idea too. So now that we have all of our supplies ready, now we're going to start crocheting the bag. So in this bag, I am going to be using a few of my favorite, um, my favorite techniques to make the crochet look nicer and more professional. 
so I am going to be using things like my chainless starting stitches and the invisible slip stitch so if you want to go check out the video I have on that see the link in the description box I will also be using the magic loop method again see the video link in the description box for that as well so um, I am going to be using a few slightly they're not like difficult but slightly more than just um, beginner in the sense that okay I know all the basic stitches that's you know that's what I would normally consider a beginner is somebody who just knows how to work back and forth with basic stitches or how to work in the round with basic stitches so I'm going to consider this slightly above beginner level because we are going to be doing some things that are um, just slightly harder than the things that you would normally do in what would be considered beginner level projects but this is not anything that is terribly difficult and if you are a beginner if you are a confident beginner and you are ready to kind of try something new that's a little bit higher and push your skill level a little bit try to um, learn a new technique here and there then this could be approachable for an advanced beginner or confident beginner if you are ready to try some new techniques so we're going to start with the bag part and what we're going to do I'm going to explain this ahead of time we're going to start with our foundation chain right we're going to work across the foundation chain and then we're going to turn the whole thing upside down so okay let's pretend this strand of yarn was our foundation chain we're going to work across it and then we're going to turn it upside down and then work across the bottom of the foundation chain so I'm going to show you how to do this in more detail in a second but I'm just going to give you an idea of what we're doing here first so that basically creates um, we're, we're essentially making a tube that is closed at the bottom so that foundation chain from us working across one side of it and then working across the other side of it then we are making kind of a, an elongated tube shape that is already closed off at the bottom because the bottom edge is the foundation chain edge so we're going to start with a foundation chain like I said and for this project I am going to take my main color yarn and I'm going to chain 34 All right, so now we're going to begin working across. So we are going to skip this very first chain and we're going to work into the second chain from the hook. So we're gonna insert our hook into this second stitch. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that very first chain and that's gonna make it shrink. We're gonna make it smaller because we're going to be using um, the chainless starting single crochet and the invisible slip stitch in this part of the bag so we're not going to be counting that first chain as a stitch because none of the following rounds will have a starting chain we're going to be using the chainless starting single crochet instead of a starting chain so now that that last chain stitch is pulled tight I'm gonna work three single crochet into the second chain from the hook like so and then I'm going to single crochet in each of the next 31 chains across all right so that is the 31 chains I have one chain stitch left and if you notice that your piece is curling up that is totally normal um, you didn't do anything wrong that is just the nature of um, the, the crochet when you're first getting started so it will curl up by itself but as we continue to add on to it it will flatten out on its own and don't worry about it if it's curling up so now that we have this one chain left we're gonna work five single crochets into that last chain all right so now we're going to turn around so that um, we are looking at the bottom of the foundation chain here so here is the tops of our stitches like this we went across the row this way now we're going to turn it over so that 
the bottom edge of the foundation chain is facing up and we're going to work into the bottom of each chain stitch. So now I'm going to single crochet into the other side of the next 31 chains across. All right. So now all we have left is this original chain stitch that is where we worked those three single crochet into that one stitch at the beginning of the round. So now I'm going to work two more single crochet into the bottom side of that stitch. So now we're going to join the round with an invisible slip stitch into the very first single crochet. So what we're going to do, if you've never seen my invisible slip stitch video, then we're going to go ahead and stretch out the loop on the hook, let go of it with the hook, then right here is the first single crochet of the round. So I'm going to insert my hook into that first single crochet from back to front, not from front to back like we normally would, but we're inserting it from back to front. We're going to take that stretched out loop, place it over the hook, and pull it through from front to back. So this is less visible than a regular slip stitch join. And I will mention here that even though we are using the invisible slip stitch and the chainless starting single crochet in this project, for the bag part, um, we're not going to be using the invisible join method, as I mentioned, in a continuous um, where the rounds all go the same direction. So we're going to be turning at the end of each round. And so in this case, when you're turning after every single round and you're using the invisible join method with single crochet, it is not quite as invisible as if we were using it um, when all the rounds are going the same direction or if we're using it with a taller stitch. So it's not going to be totally invisible, but it's still, in my personal opinion, looks better than the starting chain and regular slip stitch join that would normally be used here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the work. And I'm going to stretch the loop slightly on my hook and work a chainless starting single crochet. So that just means that we are basically working a stitch that looks like a single crochet because it kind of is and it's replacing the turning chain or the starting chain because we are um, using it instead of that. And it performs the function of that starting chain by getting us up to the right height. So to do that we stretch the loop on the hook a little bit and work a regular single crochet. So when the pattern tells you to work a chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch, that means not the stitch that the loop is coming from because that is the stitch that you joined into and you can't insert back into that stitch without unraveling your loop. So we're going to insert into the same stitch that the working yarn is coming out of, which is the last stitch of the previous round. So as you can see, here is where my working yarn comes from and I just inserted my hook into that last stitch of the previous round same stitch my yarn was coming from and worked that regular single crochet. Now, if you are not used to reading your work and being able to identify um, which stitch is which, then I would highly recommend you put a stitch marker in the top of that chain starting single crochet just to make sure that you know where it is. And then we're going to single crochet in the next 71 stitches around until we get back to that chainless starting single crochet at the beginning of this round. This is round two, by the way. All right, so I'm almost back to the beginning. So we can see here that the chainless starting single crochet is the first one that is going the same direction that of the round that we're in. And the top of that stitch is kind of stretched out. It's longer than the other ones. So we can see that the um, there is one more stitch left here that is still going the opposite direction as far as the V shape is still going in the opposite direction from the, sh the direction we're going right now. So that is my last stitch to work into. So I've just worked 
the chainless starting single crochet and then I've worked another 71 regular single crochets around and we're going to join with the invisible slip stitch again so I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook and let go of it insert my hook into the top of that chainless starting single crochet from back to front grab that stretch loop and pull it through from front to back and then I can tighten it back down if I want so this is what round two looks like at this point we've we've finished round one and round two and so if I bring this um, together actually the way it's going to go then we're basically making the base of our bag here so the sides of it are going to continue straight up from here and this bottom part where the chain is the foundation chain that's going to be the folded place where will be the bottom of our bag so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue repeating row two to make the bag taller so for rows 3 to 21 I'm going to continue repeating row 2 with my main color yarn. Alright so now we have finished up to row 21 and this is the place where we're going to stop using the green and we're going to change to white. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the green yarn and switch to my white color yarn. Alright so what we have here is the last row that we worked went this direction. Now if the last row that you worked went the other direction, um, for example if you had it turned this way where the last row you worked um, was on the outside, your row 21 was worked from the outside, then just go ahead and turn it inside out because we want the last row that we worked to be a wrong side row so that the back of that last row, that row 21, is facing out. So now we're going to turn and we're going to change to the white. So when you're working with an invisible slip stitch, um, the method for changing colors is a tiny bit different than it normally would be if you were using a regular slip stitch. And you can see right here that, um, like I said, the invisible join method isn't totally invisible when you're working um, with single crochet and you're turning after every single round but it is still in my opinion a little bit better looking than the regular method with the chain one and turn and then join with a slip stitch so um but the nice thing here is that i have this situated um, in the pattern it will end up not on the very edge but just slightly to one side of that edge so that from the front of the bag you will not see it at all and from the back it's really not too noticeable so what we're going to do is we're going to take our white yarn, I've already cut the green yarn, and I'm going to grab the new white yarn and pull a loop of that through the current loop, like so. It looks like a chain stitch, but we're going to pull on that green yarn tail until that loop, the green loop, almost completely disappears. So that will help our color change to be as invisible as possible, but we can still use that invisible slip stitch. So now what we're going to do is, since we've already turned, we're going to work our chainless starting single crochet into that first stitch, like so. Our loop was already stretched out a little bit, so I didn't have to stretch it again. And now we're going to basically repeat row two several more times. So that was my chainless starting single crochet for row two. And this is actually um, our 22nd row that we're starting right now. So for rows 22 to 30, we're going to repeat row two. And so that was my chainless starting single crochet, and I'm gonna single crochet all the way around, but as I go around, I'm gonna crochet over the yarn tails from the white and the green that we just um, made, the green tail and the new white tail. I'm gonna crochet over those as we go to avoid weaving them in later. So as you can see as I go around, you can't really see the green tail and the white tail that are hiding buried underneath those stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all the way around this round. And like I said, this is round 22. 
for rounds 22 to 30, we're going to repeat row 2. And it's exactly the same as what we were doing before, we're just doing it in the white now. All right, so now we've finished the last row of the white, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut my yarn and tie off. And because we use that invisible slip stitch, the little tie off knot that we make when we pull that tight sits on the back of the edge of the work instead of right on top of the edge. So it sits kind of behind it. So we're gonna go ahead and weave in this tail later on but this is the actual bag part of our purse so this is the finished size and this is um, a pretty dense stitch so that we will not have to line it if we don't want to you could if you want to but um, for simplicity's sake i'm not going to line this and the fabric um, it doesn't really have any holes in it that are big enough for things to fall out unless you carry like yarn needles in your purse you know loose without a case on them so and I don't really know of anybody that does that maybe you do but unless you're carrying something that small and that thin um, just loose in your in your bag then there's not really going to be anything that you would carry that would be small enough to find its way out so now that the main part of the bag is finished, we're going to move on to the strap. Now I will say that the strap is optional if you want to just use it as a zipper pouch and you don't want to carry it as a bag, then you could omit the strap if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and make a strap for this bag. And because this bag is pretty small and won't be carrying a ton of weight in it, we don't have to do anything like real special with the strap to keep it from like stretching out or making sure that it's strong enough to carry whatever's in the bag because it's a very small bag. So it won't be likely that you're going to carry something really heavy in this bag. So we can do a pretty, uh, pretty thin or lightweight type of strap. So for the strap, I'm going to take my brown yarn and I'm going to chain five. All right, so I'm going to skip the first chain and single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in the next three chains. So I now have four stitches in my row, not including that chain stitch that was skipped in the beginning, but just the four single crochets that we made. So for row two, I'm going to turn the work and work a chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch. So I'm just gonna stretch the loop on my hook a little bit and work a regular single crochet in the same stitch that the loop was coming from. There's my chainless starting single crochet and now I'm going to single crochet into the next three stitches. All right, so that's row two. So we are basically going to continue repeating row two until the strap is the length that you want it to be. So in this particular case, I'm making it a crossbody length, which the precise length will depend on the person wearing it but the pattern does give you an estimated uh, measurement to go by for the strap length. So again, we're just gonna turn, work that chainless starting single crochet into the same stitch, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. Again, and turn, work the chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. And we're going to keep repeating this very short little row until the strap is the length that we want. All right, so now the strap is the length that we need it to be. Obviously the length will depend on the person who's going to be using the bag. Um, I will say that if you want to, you can make a shorter strap and, and do like a wrist strap and do Kind of a wristlet bag instead of a crossbody but if you're doing a crossbody 
because this is not adjustable, you want to choose a length that will best suit the wearer. So if you're making it for yourself, it's a good idea to either measure a strap of an existing bag that you have, or take the tape measure and drape it over your body as if it were a crossbody bag strap to measure. Now if you're making it for somebody else, just keep in mind that a taller person or a plus sized person would need a little bit longer strap than if you're making this for a um, like a child or a shorter person. So I am making this for a shorter person. So I am doing about 42 inches length of my strap. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the yarn and tie off and I've left about an eight inch tail, eight to 10 inch tail on both ends here so that I can use that tail to sew the strap onto the bag. Now at the moment, this is curling and twisting a lot, but once we block the strap for our bag, it will lay nice and flat. And the yarn that we're using for this, and because we are working it at a tighter gauge, will help keep it um, sturdy and it's not going to have as much stretch in it as some other types of yarns could have. All right, so now we're going to move on to the lens part of our bag. This is just kind of an externally attached thing that we put on the front just to make it look more like a camera because obviously every camera needs a lens. And so now we're going to make that part. And I'm going to start with my black yarn, but we're also going to use some white in this lens as we go along. And we're going to start by making a magic circle. Now, I just did a video on the magic circle last week. So if you haven't seen that yet, see the link in the description box down below for more detail on that. But we are going to make a magic circle to begin this circle because we're basically making a flattened circle. And we're working it from the center out. So to do this, we're going to make a loop so that the... If I'm holding it in my hand, the tail end is coming over the working yarn, or if we had it going this way, the working yarn is running over the tail. So then I'm going to bring the working yarn on the other side of that tail yarn like this and pull up a new loop. Now basically what we've done here is we have made a slip knot without tightening it. So we're going to leave it loose like this. And we're just going to place the new loop that we just made onto the hook, like so. And this is what our magic circle looks like at this point. So this is where we're really going to need the stitch marker. Um, this is a split ring stitch marker. This is my favorite kind for crochet. If you have a different kind that you like to use, that's fine. But it needs to be kind that you can remove from the stitch. So this is going to help us keep track of our rounds so that we know where the beginning of every round is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we're going to pull this chain stitch tight so that it won't really be visible. It will kind of disappear into the work. So now that we have our little tightened chain stitch, we're going to work six single crochet into the ring. So that basically means we're going to insert the hook under this strand of yarn that makes up the, the ring or the magic loop, the magic ring, the magic circle is also called, and work our single crochet around that strand of yarn. So that was the first one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is all of our stitches for the first round worked into the center of that circle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let go of the working yarn for a minute. We're gonna grab this little yarn tail and we are going to pull on it really hard and tighten it up as much as possible to get rid of the hole in the center of our round because we want that to disappear. So I have pulled that as tight as I can possibly get it. 
And now we can either crochet over the tail or try to make a knot on the back and then weave it in later. I like to crochet over it if I can, um, especially if I'm working in a continuous spiral. And in this case, we are. So now to finish up our round, the last thing we need to do is take the stitch marker and I'm going to take that little split end and we're going to put it through the loop that is currently on the hook like so and that will mark where the beginning of this next round is so now we're ready to work round two and like I said we're working in a continuous spiral and I'm gonna go ahead and crochet over the yarn tail from our magic loop or magic circle and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put two single crochets in each stitch around. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch. I'm going to bring the yarn tail over that as well so I can crochet over it. And I'm going to work two single crochets into that stitch. Then I'm going to go to the next one, insert, make sure the yarn tail is on top of it two single crochets into the next stitch and we're going to do this for every single stitch all the way around until we get back to the marker so we're doing it a total of six times because we started with six stitches in the first round and I'm just going to kind of flip my stitch marker over out of the way so I can see the stitches that are, are next all right, so that is the last stitch before the stitch marker because the next stitch is the one that the stitch marker is in and it is the first stitch of the of the round we just did. So we don't want to work into that yet because that is not part of this round. So this is what our work looks like after round two and we should have 12 stitches, including the one that the marker is in because that's the first stitch of the round. And the last step for this round is to take the stitch marker from where it is and put it in the loop that is currently on the hook, like so. So now we are ready to work round three. So for round three, we're going to repeat a little sequence all the way around. So our sequence is single crochet into the next stitch and then work two single crochets into the next stitch. So that's what we're going to be repeating. So I'm going to do it again. Single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet into the stitch after. Again, single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet into the stitch after. And as I said, I'm still crocheting over my tail so that it will not have to be woven in later. And we are going to repeat this little sequence until we get back to the stitch marker. All right, so we should have 18 stitches now. And the next step is to move the stitch marker to the current loop that is on the hook. So that is the end of round three. So now let's move on to round four. And to do this, we're going to work a different sequence now. So the little sequence we're going to be repeating is to single crochet in the next two stitches and then put two single crochet in the next stitch. So we're going to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet in the next two stitches and two single crochet in the next stitch. And I will keep repeating this until I get back to the marker. All right, so I'm back to the marker. And as usual, we're going to move that stitch marker to the current loop on the hook. And we should have 24 stitches in this round. 
All right, now the next one is round five. And for round five, we're gonna do something a little different because we are going to work part of round five in white. And that is going to kind of make the little, um, it, it's supposed to kind of look like a little reflection on the lens. And it just kind of adds a little bit of, of realism or character or something, makes it look better. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of white on part of this round. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to single crochet with the black in the next three stitches. And then we're going to work two single crochet in the next stitch. But we're not going to finish the last stitch, that second single crochet in that stitch. We're going to leave it partially undone. So we're going to stop when we have two loops left on the hook. And then we're going to add the white yarn. So here is my white yarn. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a loop of that in those last two loops of that last black stitch like so. And this is kind of along the lines of tapestry crochet if you've ever done that. And now what we're going to do is work the next few stitches in the white and then change back to the black. Alright, so we're also going to crochet over the black working yarn and the white tail just to make sure that they get hidden. So now that we have our white, we are going to work the same sequence, single crochet in the next three stitches and two single crochet in the next stitch. We're going to do that twice. So I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches and then work two single crochet in the next stitch and then I'm going to do it again, single crochet in the next three stitches and two single crochet in the next stitch but we're again going to stop in the middle of that last stitch where we still have two loops on the hook and instead of yarn over and pull through two loops with the white we are going to change back to the black now so to change back to the black I'm gonna go ahead and cut the white yarn I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail and now I'm going to take the black yarn and pull up the last loop with that black yarn. So now we've changed back to black. Alright, so now that we have our black yarn back on again, I'm not going to go ahead and crochet over the white tail because I don't want it be, to be peeking through on this part. So I'm going to leave it up here and then we'll crochet over it when we go around this part around the white stitches. So I'm going to leave that hanging for right now and then I'm going to repeat that same sequence. Single crochet in the next three stitches and then two single crochet in the next stitch and keep doing that until I get back to the marker. All right, so we are back to the marker and that is the end of our round five. I'm gonna move the stitch marker to the current loop on the hook. And you should have 30 stitches in this round. All right, so that was round five and now we're gonna work round six, which is our last round in the black. So we're going to work the sequence of single crochet in the next four stitches. and then work two single crochet in the next stitch. And as I said, I'm going to bring my white yarn tail over the top of this white section and crochet over it from here so that it does not peek out of the black if we just crocheted over it on a section that was all black.
All right, so here's my last stitch going into the white, or my last two stitches, I should say, because that last one, we were working two single crochets into that stitch, and then I'm just gonna kinda give it a little bit of a stretch to make sure that that yarn tail is in there and it's hidden, but it's not going to be um, pulling the fabric so that it isn't laying flat. All right, so now I'm just going to continue that sequence around as normal. Like I said, single crochet in the next four stitches and put two single crochet in the next stitch. So that's the end of my round. I'm gonna move the stitch marker to the current loop on the hook and that's the end of round six. So you should now have 36 stitches in your round. All right, so now we are going to kind of straighten out this little blip in the edge here because we're going to move on to working in straight rounds with the white to make the edge of the lens and we don't want to um, have that little jog in our color change. So what we've got here is what's starting to look like a hexagon, but don't worry if it's starting to look like a hexagon because the edging we're going to put on it is going to make that disappear. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches and then we're going to work an invisible slip stitch in the next stitch. So I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook and let go of it. Insert my hook from back to front into the next stitch. Grab that loop and pull it through from front to back. So that is kind of the end of the black part of our lens and we can remove the stitch marker. So now we can see that we've kind of straightened out that edge so that it doesn't have a funny um, jog in the edge. All right, so now we are done with the black yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the yarn. And what we're going to do is we're gonna change to white now. So now we're basically gonna turn it over. We're going to grab the end of the white yarn and we are going to hook that yarn and pull it through the current loop on the hook, like so. Looks kind of like a chain stitch. And then we're going to grab the black yarn tail and pull on it until that black loop disappears. And then that way um, we won't have any visible color joins on the front of the work. And then we can turn it over. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and lay the tails over and crochet over them as we go. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna work several rounds of white with no increasing to just make a little, uh, a little standing up part of the white. So we're going to start by working the chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch. So that same stitch that the loop is coming from, I'm gonna stretch the loop on the hook a little bit, insert into that same stitch, and single crochet. So now we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around until we get back to that first single crochet, the chainless starting one. All right, so I am back around to the beginning of the round and you can kind of see how this white round is curling up instead of laying flat. That is pretty much what we want it to do because this section is supposed to stick up from the black part. So now I'm gonna join with the invisible slip stitch, stretch the loop on the hook and let go, insert into the first stitch of the round from back to front, grab that loop and pull it through from front to back. So I'm not going to turn the work after this round, but we are going to basically repeat that round two more times. So this was round seven and we're going to repeat it again for rounds eight and nine. All right, so there is the end of round nine. And you can see how that is curling up, which that is exactly what we want it to do. All right, so now we're going to turn the work so that the wrong side of the last few rows is facing us. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making this curl down even tighter like that so that it is touching 
the black part or touching the bottom of this white section. So we're basically going to be slip stitching the current row to the base of row 7. And that is going to make this little curled up white edge that sticks up, you know, three-dimensionally around this black circle. So before we go any further, we have to cut the yarn. So we're going to leave about a yard of extra yarn, maybe a little more than that, and cut it. And now what we need to do is we need to bring this yarn tail to the back side of the work. So I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook a little bit and let go of it. And then I'm going to uh, look for the base of one of these stitches from row 7. And I'm going to bring my hook up through the bottom of one of those stitches. So now I'm going to grab that yarn with my hook and I'm going to pull it down through the work until it comes out the bottom. All of it, including the tail. Like so. So now we can insert the hook back into that loop and pull the tail to stretch the loop. So now the working yarn is coming from the underside of the work. So now I'm going to insert my hook into the front loop only of the next stitch and into the base of the next stitch from row 7, like so. So now that it's going through the back, and then I am going to slip stitch through all of those layers. So we are slip stitching layers together here to go around the edge of this, and this will hold this curled up white section down so that it will stay in that position and it won't just keep uncurling. So again, I'm going to go into the next stitch in the front loop only. So that's only that front strand of the next stitch. And then insert into the base of the next stitch from row 7. And then slip stitch through all those layers. Again, front loop of the next stitch, base of the stitch from row 7, and then slip stitch through the layers. And like I said, this will secure the edge of our lens and make sure that it does not uncurl. So I am going to go ahead and keep doing this all the way around until I get back to where I started and until the entire edge of row 9 is slip stitched to the base of row 7. Alright, so now that I've slip stitched all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and pull the loop on my hook until the yarn tail comes out. And then I can take my yarn needle, thread the yarn tail that we have left over into the yarn needle. And then I can insert it straight down through the base of that first slip stitch and this will help bring the tail to the back of the work. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that through. Now the yarn is coming from the back of the work. You can see, especially if we go and kind of pinch it all the way around, we have this little three-dimensional edge around our lens. And so that slip stitching helps hold the edge of it down but it also helps keep it from blocking the view of this little white reflection thing that we made in the lens. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side until we're ready to assemble the bag. So now all we have left to make is a few of the little details for the bag. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the viewfinder. So this is going to be the little square part up above the lens on the bag. And to do this, I'm going to start with a magic circle, just like we did for the lens, um, the lens portion. So here's my magic circle. I'm going to chain one and pull the chain stitch tight so that it's not really adding any extra bulk. And then I'm going to work a little sequence of single crochet in the ring, chain two, 
and I'm supposed to do that four times. So I just did it once. So I'm going to do it again. Single crochet in the ring, chain two. Single crochet in the ring, chain two. Single crochet in the ring, chain two. So that makes four times. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the yarn tail and pull on it and make it very tight so that the hole in the middle disappears. And you can see we're kind of making a little square shape. So now I'm going to let go of the loop on my hook and insert my hook into that first single crochet from back to front and pull the loop through from front to back. There's my invisible slip stitch. And now we're going to work round two. So this was round one that we just did and you should have 12 stitches when you're done with it. Now we're going to work round two. So for round two, we're going to stretch the loop on the hook, which it already is stretched a little bit. We're going to work a chainless starting single crochet in the same stitch. All right, so now we're going to work a sequence of single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that little corner chain space right here. Then we're going to work a little repeat sequence. So the sequence is to single crochet in the next stitch and then work single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the corner chain space. So I'm going to do it again, single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the corner chain space. One more time, single crochet in the next stitch, and then single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that corner chain space. So here is our square. Now I'm going to stretch the loop and let go, and then join to the first stitch of the round with that invisible slip stitch. And this is our little black viewfinder square. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn. I'm going to leave a tail on this for sewing it on and then tie off. And when we go to attach this to the bag, we're going to attach it with white stitching. So that will kind of also make the same type of little reflection thing that we did on the lens. We're going to do that over here as well. So that is our viewfinder, and the only piece left to make is the little oval-shaped label. And this is going to go on the upper corner of the bag. So to do this, we are going to start by chaining six with the black yarn. We're gonna skip the first chain and work two single crochet in the second chain from the hook. We're gonna work a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And we've got one chain left and in that last chain we're gonna work four single crochet. Like so. And then we're going to work a regular single crochet into the bottoms of these chains from the foundation chain. So now this is where we started. We're flipping it around so that the foundation edge is on top. And working into the other side of the foundation chain, we're going to work a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then into this very last chain, we're going to work two single crochet. And now we can stretch the loop on the hook and join to the first stitch of the round with our invisible slip stitch, like so. So again, I'm going to cut the yarn leaving a tail because we need to attach this later. And then we will tie off. So here is what our little oval shaped label looks like once it is finished and we're going to assemble the bag now. So here are all the parts that we have at this point. We have this whole lens piece that's going to go kind of like this. Our viewfinder is going to go up here. And then our little label is going to go over here. 
So we are going to use the yarn tails that are currently attached to everything to sew the pieces to the bag. And we also have our strap, of course, and we will attach that when we're finished with the rest of this. So first I'm going to attach the lens section. So I currently have a relatively long yarn tail coming off of this, and it's threaded through my yarn needle. And I'm going to place this so that the little reflection thing is in the upper right corner, just because I like the way it looks that way in that position. And I want it to be pretty centered on the front of the bag. So once the lens is in position, I'm going to kind of hold it down. I want to make sure that it is not touching the bottom edge of the bag, um, but that it is either almost touching or touching the white edge at the top. So once I've got that situated where I want it, I'm going to hold it down and insert my hand into the inside of the bag. And then I'm going to bring the yarn needle to the back or through the, through the bag, right where that yarn is coming out of. And then I will come up here next to that stitch so that I can come and take another stitch into the lens. And I will say that we are only stitching through the white areas of the bag, or of the lens I should say, because we don't really want the black part to show through um, behind this edge. So we are coming through and picking up part of the bag fabric, only on the front of course, we're not stitching through the back, and then grab uh, like a part of a stitch from the white edging part of our lens and pulling that through. So we're basically working a running stitch, but we don't have to do it from the inside of the work, or from both sides of the work, I should say. So this is how we're going to secure the lens to the bag all the way around until we get back to where we started. All right, so I am almost around to the beginning where I started. And you want to make sure that you're not taking your stitches and pulling them really tight, because we don't want to make like a cinched area around the lens part. We just want it to lay flat. So now it is attached all the way around and you can see why we were doing our stitches into this white edging, um, not directly on the edge. We were doing them kind of behind the edge and that's so that you can't really see any of that stitching. It just looks like it's sitting on top, but you can't really see uh, where it's attached or where it's stitched down. So now I'm going to take my working yarn, bring it to the inside of the bag, which means I can just turn my bag inside out. And now we are going to secure it. So I'm going to take a small stitch through the seaming yarn, um, through one of these previous stitches and through a strand of the bag, wrap the yarn around the needle and pull that needle through to make a knot. I want to make sure that that is secure. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bury this yarn tail. So I'm going to bring it kind of through the bag but not coming out through the um, edge of the lens. So I'm going to bring it up very, very close to the edge of that lens, the white section. And then because of the way that we made this lens so that the um, the white section kind of curls to the inside and then we slip stitched it down. We essentially made a little tube around the edge of this. So we can take our yarn tail and just kind of feed it into that tube, into the center of that tube, and it will stay in there and it won't come out. Our seam is already secured because we made a knot but we can just kind of feed this around the lens section or around this white um, edging of the lens and that will keep our tail securely buried out of the way where you can't see it and then we don't really have to like weave it in the normal way. So I am going to feed this around through that little tube 
until I've gotten through um, a decent amount of yarn about halfway around the lens. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the extra yarn. Like so. Alright, so now that lens is attached and it is pretty secure so that's not going to like fall off or anything. So now we're going to add the remaining details. So I am going to start with this little oval shaped label. So I did crochet over the shorter tail when I was making this, but I'm going to weave it in a little further because it is, it is only woven in about an inch currently and I want it to go a little further than that. So I am going to weave it into the back of some of these stitches going down the other side from where I crocheted over it and trim the extra. And then we're going to place this right about here. We're going for the upper left hand corner and we want that to sit kind of just above the middle of the white section. So I am currently um, positioning this about, about a half inch in from the edge and just above like the center line of where this white section would be. Or you could put it directly on the center if you want to. So I'm just going to position it where I think it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to thread this yarn tail that is attached to that into my yarn needle. So one thing that you do want to note is that when you are stitching an applique, which this is an applique, when you are stitching an applique onto something that is not the same color as your applique, you don't want to like whip stitch this around the edge because you will see your stitching and personally I don't really like the look of that whip stitch going over the edge when you can see it. So for a cleaner, more um, professional, polished type of look, I'm going to do a running stitch, which is just an up and down stitch. So first I'm going to, again, position this where I want it and hold it down. I'm going to bring the needle to the back of the work, so inside the bag. And then I'm going to bring it up in the, um, through the fabric of the bag and up through the edge of my piece, my applique. And then I will go ahead and pull that through. And then again, making sure that my piece is in the position that I want. I'm going to go basically over to the next single crochet of my applique and go straight down through the, um, the front layer of the bag. So I'm going to keep attaching this in this manner all the way around until I get back to the point on the applique that I started where my tail was. Alright, so I'm back around to the edge. I've brought my yarn to the back and now I can do the same thing. I can grab a strand of yarn from the original stitching and from the white bag, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull the needle through to make a knot. And then with this yarn tail, I'm just going to slide it up between the layers of the black applique and the white crochet fabric on this side and then I'm going to bury that tail between the layers. So now that that is secure, I'm going to go ahead and trim that extra yarn tail. And there's our little black um, label on the side. So now all we have left is the viewfinder. And for this one I am going to use a little bit of um, preparation I guess you might call it before I put this on because if we put this on the way it is we've got two yarn tails coming off of this that we'll have to do something with so it's easier to just weave in the shorter tail now 
then to try to um, weave it in after we've attached it to the bag. So I'm going to take this yarn tail and weave it into the back of my little square before I attach it. So now that that tail is woven in, I can go ahead and clip the extra and then we'll be ready to attach it to the bag. So again, we want to position this in the center. We want it kind of centered between the top and bottom of the white section and we want it centered with the lens. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine right about there and thread the tail into my yarn needle. So now I can again bring the yarn through the white part of the bag to the back and then I'm going to use that up and down type of stitch again to secure the black viewfinder square to the bag. Alright, so now I am back to where I started and my little viewfinder is secured all the way around and I'm gonna go ahead and make a knot on the back just like we normally do. All right, so now that this is secured and we can bury the tail, it's not gonna be buried um, very long, meaning the length of it isn't, isn't very long. So I'm gonna take another stitch over the top of the white and then bury it again back the other direction. All right, so now let's go ahead and trim the extra. And the reason that I'm burying these tails in this way is because since I'm not lining this bag, I want the inside of it to be as clean as possible. Yes, we still have the stitching lines that are holding the appliques onto the front, but I don't want it to look like really messy inside since I'm not gonna line it. So now I'm gonna take an extra length of the white yarn. It doesn't need to be quite this long, but this is just an extra piece that I had. And we're gonna do a little bit of embroidery, super, super simple embroidery on here. So I'm gonna pick a corner, not an outside corner, but if you remember, each of these little corners, we had a chain two space on the first round, and that little chain two space is still just barely visible. So we are working into the corners of the first round and not the corners of the second round. So I'm going to pick a corner of the first round and bring my needle up. I'm going to go ahead and pull it through and I'm going to leave a tail on the back. Then I'm going to go to the next corner and bring the needle down. Again, this is the corner of the first round. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull that through. So now we're basically doing a back stitch, if you've ever done any kind of embroidery before. So now I'm gonna bring the needle up through the next hole, which is over here. And then I'm going to pull it through and go back to the hole that I was just in and bring it down, like so. All right, so that is our second stitch. Now, here's where it looks like it goes like this, then like this. Now we're gonna go up to this next corner over here and come up through that corner. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull that through and go down through the corner we were just in, right here. So now we just have one um, spot left. So I'm gonna come up over here to the corner where we started. I'm gonna come up through that corner right there and then back down right where we were just at before in the previous stitch. And then I'll pull that to the back. And now we have kind of a little square back stitched into that. And this is just trying to give it the illusion of some depth, that there's multiple, you know, that this isn't just a flat thing because the viewfinder is usually, um, even though there's glass in the front, it's not uh, flat, it is three-dimensional, and inside of it, it goes deeper. So we're just trying to give it that look of some depth to it besides just a flat square. So now that I have both yarn tails at the back, I'm gonna take these two yarn tails, the one we started with and the one we have right now, and I'm gonna tie them together in a double knot like so, 
And then I'm just going to take these two yarn tails and this one, and I'm going to weave them into the white part of the crochet. So this white section of the bag is going to be where we weave in both of these yarn tails and this one. All right, so now that we have the bag assembled except for the straps, we're going to add the zipper. Now, I suppose if you really wanted to avoid the zipper, you could just put a button right here and a little button loop or even a magnetic snap, I guess. But I'm going to do a zipper just because I, th I find that a lot more functional um, than just a regular snap or button closure on its own. So I'm going to add this white zipper into the top of my bag. And to do that, obviously I have my scissors, I have a needle with some white thread, I've got um, a double strand of thread in this, meaning I've got the thread looped from one end through the eye of the needle and then back to the end. So what I like to do, this is totally optional, but anytime I'm doing any kind of hand sewing, I like to run my thread through beeswax or if you have a different kind of thread wax that you like, but this helps keep it from tangling and getting knotted as you're using it. So I definitely prefer to do that. And I also have a few sewing pins um, to hold the zipper still. Those aren't like 100% necessary, but I find that they help quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the thread around my finger and then like twist it like that, twist it off and pull it tight to make a knot. However you like to make your knot is fine. So I am going to choose first which end of the bag I want the zipper pull to be at. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here so that the end of the zipper is at this end. So the first thing we need to do is put the end of the zipper into the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, since I have this laying flat already, I'm gonna take the fold line where this kind of folds itself at the edge and then I'm gonna take this metal zipper stop and insert it right on that line, but I'm making the metal part stick down a little bit. So you still wanna make sure that you have enough length in your zipper to get across to the other side, which I do, plus a little bit extra. I'm actually gonna scoot it up just a tiny, tiny bit to make sure. So here is where my zipper stop is on the back and it is just about a little over a quarter inch down from the edge and centered on the fold line where this bag kind of wants to fold um, on the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my needle and right where that zipper stop is, I'm gonna bring it to the outside. Since we're using white thread, then this should not really show very much. And because the knot is on the side of the zipper, it will not have a problem pulling through the crocheted fabric. So it's staying on the zipper. And then I'm gonna take another stitch straight back down on the other side of the zipper coil, like so. And I'm going to repeat that stitch several times. So I'm gonna keep coming up on this side of the coil and then coming back down. And what we're doing uh, would, would also be called a bar tack if you are familiar with that terminology. So we're basically bar tacking across the end of the zipper coil here. We're just making a series of stitches in the same place that go across the end of the zipper. All right, so that is my last bar tack. I've probably gone over that six times or so. And that is going to secure the end of the zipper as we kind of manipulate its position around while we are sewing it along the sides. So I'm gonna pick one side or the other to stitch down first, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick this side. So what we're gonna do is we are going to position the zipper in a way where that either the zipper coil extends past the crochet or else the zipper coil kinda hides under it. So I'm going to choose to make the coil hide under it 
because since we're using a cotton yarn, it's not like really fluffy or fuzzy, and it's not super likely to get snagged in the zipper. By the way, this is a nylon coil zipper. So I'm going to bend the zipper along this edge so that the edge of the crochet just covers it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a pin. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Take a pin and just kind of pin it down right there to hold it in position. I'm actually gonna scoot it down just a little bit first. And it can also kind of help to fold the other side of the zipper tape down and make sure that when you are lining this up that um, it's not going to be twisting at this end right here. So I'm happy with the position there and I'm going to put my pin in. So now I'm going to start stitching the zipper in along the length. So I'm going to come up over here and I don't want to stitch the zipper down on top of the coil. We want to stitch it like to the first row, the base of the first row of this edge, or the last row of the bag, I should say. So I'm going to start going up and down, taking small stitches. And I am coming right at the base of that last row of our bag. And because the thread that we're using matches both the zipper and the actual bag itself, this thread will blend right in to the crochet and you won't really be able to see it at all. So I'm basically going to continue stitching like this until I get kind of to where the end of where my pin is holding it. All right, so I'm to the end of my pin. I'm going to take the pin out and then I'm going to lay the zipper lined up the same way. I'm just going to lay it in um, along this edge so that it will kind of be even with where we lined it up over here. So we just want it to lay smooth and flat. I'm going to stick the pin in it down here, further down. And I'm actually going to scoot my pin down just a little bit so that it is not directly on the line where I'm going to be stitching. So there is how I've got it lined up. And then I will just continue stitching right from where I left off. Stitching this side of the zipper to this side of the bag. Alright, so again I've made it to the end of my pin. I'm going to continue lining up the zipper along that edge of the crochet and just move the pin over as I go along and I'm going to keep doing that until I get basically almost to the fold line on this side. I'm going to stop like maybe a stitch and a half or two stitches in from the side edge of the bag. Alright, so I've stopped my seam just before, if I lay this flat, you can see here is where I stopped just before the edge of the fold line um, where the bag kind of folds together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tuck the end of the zipper down like this and then sew it across the other way. Now if, if you look closely here, the reason that I lined up the crochet with the zipper coil so that it's almost covering the zipper coil is that when you pull it back, the zipper will sit not up here flush with the crochet edge, but it will sit below the edge. So it won't be um, something that's like sticking up and real visible, but it's still functional and will not catch in the crochet because it's far enough away, but it is sitting um, down below the edge. So before we go ahead and tuck this down and stitch it with the bar tack like we did on this end, we have to pull the zipper pull up past um, where it's at right now because if we leave it down here and we stitch across then we're going to have a zipper that just sits in that little space and you can't actually open it. 
So we're going to unzip it a little bit. And then we are going to kind of hold the zipper coil together as though it were still one piece and tuck it down. So we want to bring the coil down and line it up with um, the fold line like so. So once we kind of have that in position, we want to make sure that it is straight. Then I can go ahead and just kind of pinch it where it's sitting right now. And we want to make sure that when we sew this bar tack, that the zipper tape is kind of sitting evenly so that it's not, um, we don't want it to be crooked. So we want to kind of just straighten that out, make sure that it lines up pretty evenly, and that it lines up in the little fold line crease. So here's our crease and we want it to sit within that within that crease so that it will stop, the zipper will stop right um, on the side of the bag. So here is basically where I'm going to line it up. It is a little bit harder to see and it looks like it's a little bit crooked because we are only seeing the zipper tape from one side, but this is basically where we're going to stitch it. So I am going to very carefully and not letting go of the, um, the zipper coil, because we want to hold that in position, I'm going to stitch down through that. So now that the first side is in position, I want to make sure that the second side is also kind of lined up with that before I bring my needle back out. All right, so I'm going to, like I did before, I'm going to kind of just repeat that bar tack and I'm actually gonna go ahead and unzip the zipper the rest of the way so that I can make sure that when I tack these, I want the two ends to match and I want them to be going straight down. So as you can see, here are the two ends of the zipper I want them to be going downward into the bag and not, um, I don't want them going to the side. I want them pointing down. And they will want to kind of shift a little bit on you because they are not connected at this point. But we will um, make sure everything gets lined up straight as we go along the rest of the bag. So I am just going to go ahead and hold these still as I make the rest of that bar tack by basically repeating the same stitch just like we did before. We're coming down on the one side of the zipper coil and then coming back up on the other side of it. All right, so now that that is secure, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the zipper tape down along this next side and we are going to stitch it in the same way that we did the first one but because the zipper is not closed I'm gonna make the tape or the the coil the zipper coil which is the part with the teeth I'm gonna make that hide just behind the edge of the crochet because if you remember before we made the zipper coil um, covered by the edge almost all the way and now that we're on this side the zipper coil is open so we can't really go by the same guidelines that we were using before so we just need to make sure that the whole um, coil or the entire part with the teeth on this side is not only covered by the edge of the crochet but the crochet kind of extends past it just a tiny bit and again, we are um, going to be stitching along this line right at the base of the stitches on that last row. So just as before, I am doing kind of an up and down running stitch to go ahead and stitch the zipper to the crochet, which becomes invisible. The stitching becomes invisible um, since the thread matches the yarn. All right, now I am almost out of thread here, 
So I am just going to go ahead and take a couple more stitches and then I'm going to tie off this section of thread and get another piece. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of the zipper tape. I'm going to wrap the yarn around the needle to make a knot at least once if not twice. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull it through. And then I will just kind of slip the needle into the fabric, the crocheted fabric, to bury the tail. It's kind of going through the thickness of the fabric and not coming out either side until we're ready for it to come out on the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece of thread. So again, I'm starting with a little knot. And then I'm going to pick up where I left off and continue stitching this all the way across. Alright, so as we get closer to the beginning of our zipper, we want to make sure that that zipper is all the way open because that will help the rest of the zipper tape lay flat so that we do not distort it as we are stitching. And basically just the further along that you go, the more you have to kind of move your fingers out of the way as you hold the zipper still. Um, if you're using a pin, the same goes. You just need to hold it still without um, obstructing where you're trying to stitch. So we are getting very close to the end here. And we just want to try to make sure everything's lined up. And that our thread isn't tangled. And we're just going to continue stitching basically till we get back to the bar tack. And at this point, there's not really any room for the zipper to move. So we might want to just bring the zipper pull forward a tiny bit now so that we can get right up underneath where it is stitched um, or where we need to stitch this edge of the tape down all the way up to that bar tack and then bring it to the inside of the work. So now we'll just pull that thread inside, open the zipper all the way up and then we can come down to um, the inside of the work here, kind of turn it inside out and pick up a little bit of the zipper tape. Maybe that's a little too much. Just a little bit and make a knot. And then again, we can kind of slip the needle under the zipper tape and bury the little end of the thread in the thickness of the crochet. So now we trim the thread and our zipper is basically finished now. So we can see how even when it's zipped, that zipper kind of sits below the top of the crochet and when you're looking at it straight, you can't even see that there's a zipper there. And even the zipper pull kind of sits recessed down into that little, um, I don't know what to call it, but this little channel where our zipper is sitting. So the zipper is free to open and close. It's not warped or distorted or um, messing up the shape of the bag and it is securely attached. And then we can see on the inside, um, you can see the edge of the zipper tape on both ends and on the edges, the side edges, but um, there's not really anything that's too messy looking or anything that will get in the way of the zipper closing. So un unless the, the inside of the zipper being visible bothers you, then you wouldn't have to line the bag if you don't want to, and I'm not going to. So now all that's left to do is to attach the straps. And so I am going to attach the ends of the straps on the back side of the bag. So instead of attaching it here on the ends or on the front, I'm going to attach them on the back so that they're sitting just behind 
the bag like this and then that way um, the straps will not I mean I know that cameras do have straps and there's nothing wrong with that if you do want to put them on the side but I'm gonna go ahead and put them on on the back just so that you can see the whole uh, camera shape here and so that you have easy access to the zipper so to attach the straps we're going to need to have the zipper open so this is going to be a very simple step all we're going to do is grab our yarn needle and there is a tail a yarn tail at each end of the strap and we're going to lay this out so that the strap is not twisted now right now it's still twisting a little bit because of um, the fact that it is not blocked yet but we are going to make sure that it's not sewn on twisted. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it out the way I want it to sit. And then we're going to take the yarn tail at the end of each end of the strap, thread it into the yarn needle, and then we're just kind of going to lay the bag over it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. And I am going to position my straps on the sides and I'm going to bring them down. You could attach them like up here at the edge, but I prefer the security of having it down a little further. Um, I feel like it's a stronger attachment because it's not just attached by the little edge. If you attach it up here, you know, you're only stitching the edge. Whereas if we scoot it down just a little bit, then we're going to be attaching kind of this whole little square here. So with the zipper open, I'm going to position the strap where I want it. And I am going to bring my needle down through the bag. And just kind of do a running stitch or an up and down stitch kind of along the edge of the strap. And I do want to make sure that I am holding the zipper tape up out of the way, like so, so that I can get my yarn needle behind there and um, stitch across the top. So I am just stitching a little square with my running stitch to attach the strap. So now all that's left is to stitch along the bottom edge of our strap and then I'm going to bring the yarn to the back like so so you can see our strap is attached in this whole section and not just on the little edge so I'm going to bring the yarn into the inside of the work pick up a strand make a little knot and then I am just going to slip the needle out through the front and weave the tail into the actual strap part because we can't weave it into the white or it would show through. So I'm going to weave the tail into the strap and then I'm going to make sure my strap is not twisted and attach the other end in the same way on the other side of the bag. Alright, so now our bag is finished and there you have your little adorable purse that looks like a vintage camera. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.